Okay, coaches, it is 2021. So as I see you all logging on here, just first and foremost, welcome to an amazing new year. Uh, what a crazy year we had last year, but guess what? It's over and we are ready. I've got a few more of you coming in right now, just let you guys all in. Uh, we are super excited to get underway with an amazing 2021. And what I thought I would start off with was helping each and every one of you to start to get a clearer idea of how can you get better work-life balance this coming year. I think for all of us this past year, COVID, it was just one of those things of just working as hard as you could to you know, sort of take on the huge amount of work that we had, whether it was filling out the PPP loans, coaching online, sanitizing everything you, you use to teach, uh, or the great thing of it was obviously golf was in a much better state and there were a lot more people coming out to coaching and lessons. And so we were saying yes to a lot more things. And with that said, when you say yes to a lot more things, burnout happens. And so I think one of the key things that we have to look at now is what can we do this year to ensure that we actually find better balance in our business and most importantly at home? And to do that, I want to go through three key things that you can really start to work on that are very simple concepts, very simple, but not easy to do. Uh, and today, what I want to do is try and hopefully show you steps to make sure that you actually implement them this year. Some of you might be in the Southern Hemisphere or in Arizona, Florida, and you're in the middle of the season. And these are things that you could do right now, this today, and even this week to start to implement on your business. For many of you, though, you might be in England in lockdown. Uh, you might be up in Canada or up in the Northeast, you know, and it's snowing and you're not starting up until March. And you've got time to start to think about these specific things. So depending on where you're at, I want you to make sure you've got your notepad with you. Make sure you've got a pen or a pencil or if you're typing it in, but take notes and make sure to take action. That's the biggest thing. So let's get underway with this. So the three ways to transform your work-life balance. And I would say that the first thing I want to say to you is when you have this problem of not having a good home life, right? So you don't have enough time to play golf anymore, or, you know, you're just burnt out all the time, or you don't see your spouse as much as you should, or you don't see your kids as much as you should, or you just don't have anything else but golf. I know it can be a painful place, but at the same time, you do have to get a congratulations that you've been become a successful golf coach. I mean, think about it. If you don't have enough students, you've got all the time in the world, but no money. And what my suggestion to all of you would be is it's better to get overwhelmed and too busy than it is to be broke and have no students. And I hope you all agree with that, right? Is you are at a place that if you are stressed out right now, if you are in pain and you're thinking, what am I going to do differently this year? You know, my, my spouse is telling me it's not okay. My golf game sucks. Guess what? You're in a great place and it's a lot easier, I believe, to change where you're at and get better work-life balance and it is to straight away build a built business from scratch. So what we've got to start to look at though is if we were going to build a business from scratch, if we were really thinking like, what would I do differently? What would be some of the things that I would put together in a business plan to ensure that this coming year or my new business would look different so I had time on my hands? So the first thing that I want to talk about here is we actually need to get a target. Okay, now what most of us do, right, is we get into January and we come up with a number. I'm going to make $100,000 this year, or I'm going to make 150, or I'm going to improve by 20%, or I'm going to grow my business by X percentage. And that, that's a great thing, right? But what we don't understand is, is that there's a time aspect to that. If you want to grow by 20%, just work 20% more, right? If you want to double your business, just double your output. What we've got to start to realize is there's productivity in golf coaching. And what that really comes down to is how much do you work and how much do you get paid? One of the things that I hear all the time is I'll hear coaches say, well, Will, you know, I make $100 an hour. And I'm like, mm, let's rephrase that. You charge $100 an hour. So what I want to do is just challenge you. You don't have to share it with me, okay? But I want you to write down, what are you going to file for taxes in 2020? So in April, at least in America, you're on April 15th, you've got a deadline, you're gonna to have to file for taxes. What is that total amount going to be for, okay? So that's gonna be your gross income minus what you owe to the golf course, right? Minus some expenses, you know, running, you know, PGA dues or, you know, technology or whatever you're using, right? Because those are write-offs in a business. What have you got left? Okay, and be honest, no one else is gonna see this, okay? 
So now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to go ahead and divide that by 2,000. Okay, so divide that by 2,000, because that's how many work hours there are in, in a year, right? 40 hours a week, 50 weeks of the year. And I'm not saying we all work 50 weeks of the year, but what I've found is most golf pros definitely work more than 40 hours a week. All right, we're out there doing the admin, doing the setup, doing the coaching. So I'm going to be kind and say we only work for 2,000 hours. Now, let's just say this. If you made $75,000 last year, if you divide that by 2,000, you actually make $35 per hour. So we charge 100, we make 35. So what I want you to do now is just take a look at that comparison, right? What do you charge? Have that written down. And you're welcome to drop it in. If, you, if, if any of you are willing to go ahead and uh, let me just see here in some of the, in the chat box, if you're willing to dump it in, put it in there and start to see. I charge 100, uh, I made 40,000. Okay, so you, made, you, know, you, you basically make 20 bucks an hour. And I'm not putting you down, but what I'm saying is that's productivity. What we've got to start to understand is productivity increases when the time that you're working, the hours that you're working, the price goes up, not the time goes up. Okay, so productivity would be I made $40,000 working in 1,000 hours, which means, okay, I'm at 40 bucks an hour. You made $40,000 working 2,000 hours. You're at $20 an hour. So I know it's very simple math, but we have to start to add in the equation of, where are we actually making our money when we're coaching? Okay, how much time are we actually coaching? And how much time do we want to coach? Because when you actually figure this out, a lot of people, when they go through the math with me, they find it really, really difficult. Let's just say they want to make, um, let's just keep it really simple, right? They want to make $100,000 in a year, okay? It's a big amount, right? That's a large amount for coaching. Some of you might be directors of instruction, and that's realistic. Others of you are assistant professionals or head pros, and you're thinking, if I could do $10,000. So you can do 10 or you can do 100,000. So if we did 100,000, very simply, and we charged, let's just say, you know, let's do the math. I'll bring my calculator out right now, okay? You're at 80 bucks an hour, okay? Um, let me do the math right here. Okay, so we've got $100,000, okay, divided by $80 per hour. We have to work for 1,250 hours this year. Now, if we divide that by, let's just say you're in sunny California, and you're going to take some vacations, and you're going to go ahead and, you know, have some time off. Maybe you get sick. Maybe you got to travel. Maybe you got some the PGA, whatever to do, right? So we'll divide it by 42 weeks. So if we do that, I would need to teach 30 hours a week. So if I taught 30 hours a week, had 10 hours for admin, I'd make that money. So people think hundred, you know, $100,000 is a crazy amount. But realistically, when you do the math on it, it actually works out pretty, pretty doable if you're teaching 30 hours a week. So what I want to charge you to do and challenge you to do is this idea of coaching to a target, which means, listen, I want to group, let's say you're going to do group coaching and you can make 150 bucks an hour. And your goal is, at 150 bucks an hour, I only want to teach, so let's do the math, $100,000, here it is again, $100,000, divide that by $150 per hour, okay? That's 660, that's a horrible number, 666 hours per year, all right? And let's divide that by my 42-hour work week, it's 15 hours a week. Okay, so the thing here is that now I've got 15 hours of coaching a week. Most of my coaching sessions are two hours, so that's seven sessions a week I've got to coach. So if I had a four to one ratio, seven, hopefully this isn't too complicated, right? I had seven sessions a week and I had four people in each session. That's 28 people. I need to teach 28 people a week to make $100,000 a year. You see, what I want to challenge you this year to do is don't make more money, become more productive. Now, if you become more productive, you can make a ton more money in the same amount of time, or you could make the same amount of money in a heck of a lot less amount of time. But the easiest way to stop saying yes to everything is when you know you're on target. Hey, I did my seven sessions this week. I'm there, and someone comes up to you and says, hey, can I have a $100 one-on-one -on -one lesson? I just need, I need a fix. You can turn away and say, no, I'm sorry, I can't do that today. I've got to go home and see my kids. Or I'm going to go and work on my golf game. Or whatever your reason is that you don't have life balance. Because we have a scarcity mindset. Oh, if I turn away that $100, if, if I turn it away, I'm going to lose out because I won't reach my goal. And sometimes we surpass our goal, but we keep saying yes. And sort of almost greed comes in. We don't consciously think of it as greed, but we just keep saying yes, 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 till we're burnt out. 
So what I would challenge you to do is break this down into a thing of what do you need to do each week? What do you need to do each week to hit your financial goal? If you've got a six-month season or a three-month season, if you want to make 20,000, 10,000, 50,000, just figure out what would you actually have to coach each week to get there and start coaching just for that. Just for that, six hours a week is all I've got to do to hit my goal. What you're going to find is it becomes a lot easier to direct people into the right programs because you tell them, I've only got six hours a week. And this is, these are the times I have available, and this is my coaching program, and this is what it is. And what I've seen is some of the best successes that I've had with coaches are the coaches who are director of instruction, first assistant, uh, general managers, who have very limited time. And it's like, this is when I can do a playing lesson, this is when I can do a coaching session, and this is when I can do private. And they, you see they have such little supply that if they have any demand, they fill up. Well, guess what? Supply and demand goes that when you fill up, people want more of you, and then you can actually expand your business. And this is one of the key things that we teach at RGX is the, co the concept of the sold out model. Most people are rushing around trying to get busy and fill up their business, have a Facebook page, do all the videos and put out content and emails every week. And that's all great. But the thing is, if you're getting great results for your players and you're sold out, you should have a wait list. That's your marketing. You know, some of my coaches will have 10, 15, 20, 30 people on wait list. Dan Boobany right now has over 100, right? He just transferred over and he's got all these people trying to come in. And it's like when someone says, well, I can't make that time. It's like, hey, unfortunately, that's the only time I have. This is where you get to get your life back. You get to start to get your time back because you are teaching like you're an employee, right? You, you know, this is when I can and can't coach. And so it allows you to be the entrepreneur by really actually setting the boundaries as if you were an employee. So I want to challenge you again right here. How much do you want to make? But most importantly, in how much time do you want to make it? The next thing that I want you to do is actually create your desired schedule. What would be the perfect schedule for you? Now, again, second assistant in the pro shop, head pro GM, this is easy because you've you got so little time. These are the blocks. If you're just starting up a golf business, a golf coaching business, and you've got a full array of, 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 I could teach any day of the week at any time, you have a problem. You have way too much supply and not enough demand. And so what we do is we say, yes, yes, yes. And for all of the coaches who've been out doing this for a while, you remember teaching a one-hour lesson on a Monday at seven, and then a one-hour lesson at two, and another one at, not, at you know eight at night. And you're there for 13 hours, but you only got paid for three. Remember going back to number one, productivity? So I want you to go ahead and actually plan out this year. You know when your juniors can come out. You know when your ladies can come out. You know when you've got those, those blocks of time that you can't fill. Who can we fill them with to get productive so your day is 12 to 5 in the afternoon rather than from 8 to 5, but you've still done the same amount of coaching. So I would really strongly suggest that as you start to cut supply, you will increase demand. And I'll prove this to you. All of you probably had this before, right? You were going to put your prices up and you're like, oh my God, probably everyone's going to drop out. I'm going to lose my business. I can't go from $60 to 75. It's crazy. And you raise them to 75 and nobody blinks. In fact, people actually start signing up for more lessons. Have you all had that before, right? I've had coaches go from 200 to 250 to 300. And it's like, it's almost like you can't get rid of people. And not that you're trying to, but they are. I just, yeah, that's the price. I'm willing to pay for it. If you're getting the results, they're willing to pay. I remember doing this with a great friend of mine, Gene, and, and we set up his, uh, on, on his calendar. It was with Smarter Lessons. And we, he was literally a lesson at eight in the morning, a lesson at five in the evening. And we scheduled him. It's like, these are the only times you can teach. And people started booking out six, eight, 10 weeks in advance because they thought, wow, he's so busy. I better get Thursday nights every Thursday for the next 10 weeks. Well, the thing is, he was only teaching Thursdays and Saturdays. And so it was fun to kind of see how when you shrink down the supply, the demand doesn't need to be as big. You get sold out and people want more of your program. So I would really challenge you this year to put together a calendar that's going to work for you. Something that's really going to actually be something that you would show to your spouse and they'd say, I love it. Yeah, not working on those days, not working. Maybe it's you work every other weekend. Maybe it's you work every other Sunday. Maybe it's you work one Sunday a month and not two, three, four. So really challenge yourself to design the schedule that you actually want and would make you happy, would give you life balance. And to do that, you actually now have to start to place in there what you would be doing.
You can't put, you know, just coaching and then nothing. You need to be, hey, this is the time I take my son to soccer practice. This day I go and play golf. This day you have to, you can't have a void because if there's a void there, guess what you do? Oh, half hour lesson, I'll take it. It's another 60 bucks. I can put it in my pocket compared to, no, no, I'm leaving right now to go to the gym or I'm going to go and play golf or I'm going to go and see my, I'm taking my wife out to dinner. The idea here is, is you cannot leave blank spaces on your calendar. You need to have somewhere to go because every professional that's listening right now, none of you show up late to lessons and none of you ever bail on a lesson. But when there's a blank space in your calendar, it's easy to go ahead and fill it. When it's a family appointment or something, it's easy to just, well, I'll push it back half an hour. So you've got to start to prioritize these, these things that, yeah, get signed up for a workout class. So you have to be there at two o'clock, not, well, 2.15 or 2.30. Because going to the gym, I can be there at any time. Get into that class that you really want to be part of. Schedule it in your calendar so your calendar starts to balance itself out. Instead of golf, 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 coach, 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 it's here's what I want to do with my life. Here's what I want to do with my time. Here's when I'm going to practice. Here's when I'm going to deep be with my family. So to do this, one of the biggest keys, and you hear us talk about it all the time in RGX, right, is this idea of becoming a leader. So often we get into this servant mindset and I really want to impact this in, in 2021. This is what I want you to be your focus is people want to have direction. They're frustrated with their golf game. They have a goal. What they want is the step-by-step -step process of how I'm going to get there. And they need accountability to do that. They need to have a plan to do that. They need to ensure that someone's going to go above and beyond fixing their swing and then telling them, when would you like to come back for a lesson? You know, you heard me talk about this last year. If the economy goes down this year, okay, at worst it goes down and you have a product, which is get them on the course to find a plan for them, set their goals, hold them accountable, guarantee their results. Guess what? Your business is going to skyrocket. If the economy keeps going well and things are good and COVID clears up and we get busier, you're going to be even more busy. You're going to be figuring out how to hire people. So the idea here is, is to do that, we've got to become a leader. The servant mentality that we often have, now I was saying how general managers, head pros, directors of golf have it easy when it comes to scheduling. What they do struggle with is now I've got to tell Mr. Smith, no, we're not going to work on driver. We're going to do a playing lesson because that service mentality of a PGA professional, of I'm here to help you and serve you, really becomes a problem when what they actually need is a putting lesson and a playing lesson, but they want to fix their driver. And this is where you've got to start to get genuine with people and honest with people. And the way to do that is simple. Get them on the golf course and see where their game is. I don't care if it's one-on-one, -on -one, two, three, four to one, it doesn't matter. But get them on the golf course. I don't care if it's three holes, six holes, or nine holes, but make sure you can assess their game. Let them show you what their game really looks like. Then find out what their goals are. And then let them know, my plan for you is to do this, to work on A, B, and C. You know, because if you get to that place, what you've done is you've actually become a consultant. You've become part of their team. You're not selling them a fix. They've shown you what their problem is. They've told you what their desire is. It's now your role to say, well, listen, this is what it's going to take. Ask any of your students what they do for a living. If it's a doctor, you have this issue, I'm going to prescribe you this. This is how you're going to get better. If you are selling real estate, you have to go ahead and find a prospect and you have to find exactly what he wants. And then you've got to go and find the house for him. And if you do that, you make money. Everybody is in a process of, of step by step. Here's how I get to my goal. Whether you're a chef, whether you're a golf coach, whether you're in sales, you know, here's my product. Here's your problem. You put them together. We've got a solution. This takes leadership. It takes getting out there and telling people, listen, this is what you actually need. This is what you want. And this is the commitment level you have. Let's get to work. And stopping them from saying to you, well, well no, I just really want to work on this. I just really want to work on that. Or no, I don't want to do this. Okay, that's fine. But you know what? I'm not the right fit for you. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you have to be willing to step forward. <clears throat> Otherwise, you're in the crowd, right? If you step forward, you take a step out into the, say, unknown. But what you also do is people can now see you. And they can start to say, oh, you know, I, I didn't get a lesson from this guy, but he goes on the course and, and you know, she builds a plan for you and she guarantees results for you. And he's absolutely amazing. Like, he just wasn't a fit for me because I just want to work on my swing. But if I was going to work on score, this would be the person I work with. 
you've got to be willing to take that leadership role because that's what people are looking for. That's why this month, how many people are going to join gyms in America this month? I don't know, probably 2 million. How many people are actually going to go in February? Probably about 50,000. But people who get a personal trainer, I would say their rate of being working out in, in February is probably more like 90%. And here's why. They committed, a good trainer will make you commit for five grand for three months. Well, losing the 5,000 is more painful than going to the gym. So you're going to keep going to your trainer. Plus, you're going to see results. Plus, you're going to get motivated. Plus, you're going to be around other people. And the next thing you know, it's become a habit. So this is our role. And we can't do that in a servant mentality saying, when would you like to come out for your next lesson? Uh, what would you like to work on in your next lesson? Will you practice or not practice? You see, the concept here is we've got to start to pull in that leadership mindset. And to me, that's really where assessing a person's game, understanding their goals, building a plan and holding them accountable to it is what golf students are missing. It's what they want for their kids. It's what they want for their high schoolers. It's what college players need. It's what professionals have. It's what every adult golfer definitely needs to achieve their goals in 2021. So these are the three keys that I really want you to focus on in, um, in this year. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen real quick. And I'm going to look over here to this screen and see how we're doing on time. Oh, 22. Good stuff. So let's see. Um, thoughts and feedback. Let me see. I've got a whole bunch of people on here. I'm going to see somebody I haven't spoken to in a while. Oh, Jose calling from Spain. Jose, give us an update. What, what, what are your thoughts, feedback on this? You're on mute before you start saying such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year, buddy. <laughs> well, uh, what can I say? I, I went through this myself. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's really good to hear it again and, and, and to remind yourself that uh, it's really easy to give... Uh, give the time to another person when you have mm -hmm. uh, you, you have it there free, instead of just focusing on on the long term. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think for me that's that's one of the biggest uh, things that I have uh, to to challenge myself every every week. Yeah. Was it Jay? What did Jay say? Was it Jay put it on you or who was it? Jay? Did you say? <clears throat> I think it was Jay that you said like what you're saying is. I'm not, my golf is more important than you. The one about the spouse, Jay, do you want to say, is that, is that, is that, was it Jose, you remember him saying that, right? Jay, say, say what that was. Cause it was like a real kick and it might be something that motivates some of us. <clears throat> oh, I just, uh, Jose was, was talking about the difficulty of saying no. And I think we all face that. And I said, well, just imagine if, if you want to talk about something that's difficult to do, have a place where somebody asked for you to give them a lesson and you would, had family time planned for that time slot. So what you're going to do is go home to your wife and kids and say, by the way, I'm not going to be able to spend time with you today that we had planned because instead I'm going to teach a student uh, because the student is clearly more important than you. And I just challenged Jose to say, what, what would that feel like for you? Jose, what was your response to that? Well, <laughs> but for, I, I never, I never thought about, about it that way. So, uh, actually really helped me. The, the following week, uh, I actually say no to a few people. So it was good. <laughs> yeah, and you're still alive, Jose. I am. Uh, I am. <laughs> I, I actually, I'm, uh, I've been a few days uh, taking it easy. So uh, <laughs> I like it. And I think it is a practice for all of us, right? I mean, it's so easy to slip back into a habit. As a golf pro, we all know, right? It's just like, oh, I've, you know, I've gone back into my grips weakening or, you know, I'm, I'm whatever you do in your golf game, right? Well, it's the same for business, right? Yes, 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 right? We just say it and then we learn how to say no. And we're like, wow, I've got all this free time. I've got time to say yes again. And we say yes once. And the next thing you know, we swing back into it. You know, we swing back into saying yes to everybody. So it's not something you just get and it's done. It's about having a calendar that you you literally have to look at it each week and say, this is this is my family time. This is for me. I was just working on with my with my wife over the Christmas break. This is the time we're going skiing with the family. This is the time I've got for my friends. This is the time I've got for, for life. This is the time, you know, and, and you put that schedule together and it gives you the structure that we all need. 
right? Which once we have structure, we're able to say no easily. Whereas when there's no structure and there's all this open time, it's very difficult to say no. So I, I definitely, definitely think it's one of the key things for us to do. Um, let's see, Tony Chavez, good to see you on, sir. Um, your thoughts and feedback from what you took today. Boy, this is, uh, like I said, this is a great, um, great reminder. Um, it, in 30 minutes, you were able to pretty much um, give a snapshot of what I've gone through uh, in the last six, seven months. And um, I'm excited. Um, and I got a really good news for you. Yeah. I took the director of golf position and it started in uh, two weeks. Nice, Tony Chavez. Way to go, brother. That is awesome. I just a little background on that guy. So Tony came on board. We got him co out of the industry for, he was in the industry for 20 years, got out for three years, got him back coaching, got him some facilities, and then started to have all these different job interviews and opportunities. And uh, now as you guess what, as director of golf, remember what you get to do now, Tony, you get to create the whole atmosphere and culture at the facility so way to go i'll be giving you a call today for sure to catch up man i am over the moon happy i've had two really good things already today i've had some really good things happen today that was that is by far one of the best cool so, so let's see um any thoughts or questions from anybody today anything that they picked up on or any questions or challenges that you have um today before we wrap up the call and get you all underway so i just have a quick comment yes peter yeah um, so I've been aware of, you know, supply versus demand in organizing my lesson calendar. Yes. And one of the tools I've used very successfully is an app, uh, Calendly. And there are others like yeah. Calendly. Yeah. And so on Calendly, you can limit your lesson inventory basically to the hours that you want to make yourself available to the, to the student. And so the student can once he downloads the app, can go on there and, and see what your availability is. I just wanted yeah. to throw that in as a tool. Peter, 100%. In fact, I'll, I'll bring up the next slide here because I use Calendly. <laughs> so this slide, yeah, right, yeah. In this slide right here. So um, when for any of you coaches that, hey, I want to take it to the next level, I want to go to the next step, you can apply, you know, go through our application process and you the last page is Calendly and it's to my account. And like I was on there this morning making changes, Peter, saying, actually, I'm going to do some 6.30 a.m. calls. I'll open that Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. You know, I want to go skiing on a Tuesday, so I'll do one before I go skiing. And like, that's the whole thing, right? Is that there are these tools out here. But Peter, here's the one problem, and I think if you've experienced this, is we've also got tools like Flightscope and TrackMan and, and, and websites and Facebook. And, but sometimes they're sitting right there, but we don't use them. We don't use them effectively because we sort of say, well, uh, you know, I'll just say yes to that. And I'll just say yes to that. So I think that what we've always got to look at is, the effectiveness and efficiency comes from the actual discipline of the coach. So I think I would always remind every one of you, go to the internal first. Because what I see people do is go, right, I'm going to go to Calendly. I'm going to do this. And then they buy it, they download it, and then they use it one week and they never use it again. Have we all done that? I know I've done that a bunch of things. When I've made the internal change and said, I'm going to tell my spouse that I'm going to be home for at least 15 hours, I'm going to three hours in the evening and all day Saturday, how on earth am I going to do that? My scheduling's way too difficult. Calendly, Smarter Lessons, You Schedule, um, you know, and, and the list, you know, Mind Body, all these different things. So that's exactly what I would say is get the internal right first. Once you've got that, then there are so many tools out there that can help you to make these simple things, right? Because there are companies running with thousands of employees that are able to do, to do this, right? We're, we're running a business with most of us with one. So I would just say, yeah, Peter, phenomenal. Uh, I love that uh, Calendly. I use it and I love it. And to wrap up today, because it's 9.30, for those of you who are interested in taking it to the next level, I'll see if Courtney can put it into the chat box right here. Um, go to rgx.com, apply. Uh, we have an application process and hop on a call with me. And I'd love to hear about where you're at with your business, where you're going, whether you need to build out your lesson book and just get more business because you just, you know, you need more money coming in or whether you want to get more time back on your hands and, and actually, you know, find a better structure through group coaching, whatever it is, let us know, reach out to us. But most importantly, what I would say is I see a bunch of names here today. Stefan Cox, good to see you, Ross. Yeah, good to see you on your first call. Billy as well. This is awesome. Um, just be sure to go and take action. So for those RGX coaches that, you know, are current coaches, 
remember you've got open calls that you can be on tomorrow at 12 o'clock you know there's wednesday um trans uh sorry Tuesday is transition group coaching. Wednesday is a scoring method. You know, there's all of this resources. Go and act on it. For those of you who haven't, you know, get on what we talked about today and start to put down what we showed. I'm going to bring back this last slide, right? Snap, snap a photo of that if you need to. Coach to a target, right? Set your desired calendar. Embrace becoming the leader that you need to be. So everybody make it an amazing week. Remember, Mondays, every Monday, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, I'll be on presenting like this throughout the year. So make sure to get on these calls. Love to see everyone seeing you there and um, make it an amazing week. Thanks, everyone.